this is the second part of the the online makeup uh, we are talking about some pros and cons of fixed exchange rate system and by doing it we could compare what is good for the economy by adopting fixed exchange rate system and what is not good about it so we can have some idea about what is good and what is bad by having not fixed exchange rate floating exchange rate system so the third section of this chapter is about fixed exchange rate systems and we will utilize the ISLM framework to see how uh, the policy coordination and non-coordination or cooperation and non-cooperation non can work between the non-center home country and the center foreign center country or between non-center home country and non-center foreign country so we begin by some examples of fixed exchange rate system as a as a global monetary system so in our textbook we usually talk about until now we usually talk about the home country and the foreign country and the exchange rate between the two currencies but in reality <clears throat> fixed exchange rate system involves many many countries because it's the it's how the world monetary system is organized and so the countries involved in this world economic system and they are also involved in this fixed exchange rate system as a group and one example of the fixed exchange rate system that were put into practice was from the the end of world war one world war two until the early 1970s it's called Bretton Woods system or gold exchange standard system and more recently during most of the 1970s through 80s and 90s European some European countries had their own system called the European exchange rate mechanism called ERM and the member countries in this system uh, later became the member countries of the eurozone and these systems were based on a reserve currency system so when there are n countries from country one to country n then they pick one country major economy that have that has relatively uh, superior performance among the member countries and then set this nth country currency as the base currency and once this base currency is determined then all the other countries from country one to country one minus one they will fix their currency exchange ratios against this nth country the base currency and when this kind of system is settled then the center country has its freedom to decide on its own monetary policy which we call monetary policy autonomy and this is allowed for the center country only because other countries non-center countries have to maintain a fixed exchange ratio against the center country currency they don't really have a freedom to make adjustment to their own interest rate so the each member country non-center member country interest rate must be fixed at the center country interest rate and that's how the pegging works and by doing it the non-center country will lose its ability to conduct stabilization policy because monetary policy is one of the most important tools 
of making some necessary government intercept, uh, interruptions when they either have overheated economy or uh, recessionary period. So that kind of ability to use monetary policy was only allowed to the central country. And this, this kind of asymmetry, the central country's ability to have monetary autonomy and the non-central country's inability to have monetary autonomy, this kind of asymmetry is called the nth currency problem. To avoid this kind of problem, because then it will many countries' problem, so there may be some needs for cooperative arrangements of economic policies. In the next slide, we will see how cooperation and non-cooperation uh, works between a uh, non-center home country and the center foreign country. So home country has IS and LM like this. Foreign country has IS and LM like this. This is the initial stage. The, cent uh, the foreign center country enjoys their potential GDP and the home country's GDP currently is mildly less than its potential GDP. So the, the country, the home country is suffering from a recession. And you can see by fixing the exchange rate, the home country interest rate is directly tied to the center country interest rate. If they cooperate and if the central country is willing to help the non-central country, they may be willing to lower the interest rate so that the non-central home country can use, a, use an expansionary monetary policy to lower its own interest rate and encourage firms to make more investment. How does the cooperation work? So the central country first lowers its interest rate by increasing money supply. So LM curve shifts from LM star one to LM star two. And when the foreign country interest rate falls, it will give some appreciation pressure for the home country. And that would worsen the trade balance of the home country. So IS curve shifts to the left. Of course, under the fixed exchange rate system, the, the the appreciation of home currency doesn't happen but in principle if there is no restriction on the exchange rate then it would move the trade balance uh, in a negative direction so the is curve has to shift how to fix the exchange rate must be determined under this situation right and when this there is this shift left side shift of is curve from is1 to is2 the home country can uh, finally lower the interest rate because the foreign interest rate fell from i star 1 to i star 2 right so by shifting the lm curve to this lm2 position the home country is finally in equilibrium at this point, right? And when the foreign con the home country interest rate falls, then it would have the same impact on the center foreign country IS curve. So the foreign country IS curve shifts to the left, and the foreign country will have the equilibrium here. This is the final result. So at home, now the income is higher than before from Y1 to Y2. So there is an improvement for the foreign country because they chose to cooperate with the non-center home country. They had this increase in income. So the economy is likely to be slightly overheated. It requires some sacrifice from the center country to improve the the economic situation of the home country because they have to keep their interest rates equal to each other more accurately because home country has to fix its own nominal interest rate equal to the foreign interest rate. 
does it work well in real world? Uh, not really, because uh, this kind of uh, peg is called a unilateral peg. And the unilateral peg, the one-sided exchange rate fixing, this unilateral peg gives the benefits of fixing to both countries. The home country and the center country may enjoy the benefits of fixing by promoting trade and giving extra stability, but uh, it imposes a stability cost. So to maintain exchange rate stability, the home country, the non-central country, must follow uh, the policy actions done by the central country because the central country will be mostly interested in improving their own economic situations. So whenever the central country uses any policy that can change the equilibrium interest rate in the central country, then it would have this following effect on the non-central home country. Then the countries that have to follow the central country's interest rate must experience some kind of unwanted changes in national income and sometimes price level. When the national income changes, unemployment rate changes, so they are vulnerable. And this is a kind of cost for those countries. The historical record casts doubt on the ability of countries to have cooperation. And not even having some cooperative outcome, but also it was even, even not easy to make an announcement that they will cooperate because they may have all different types of interests. So let alone actually backing that up, uh, backing the announcement of cooperation up uh, with true cooperative behavior, it was even it was hard to even get as far as announcing cooperation. The major problem comes from this existence of asymmetry between different countries. And in conclusion, the central country in a reserve currency system, the nth currency country, has tremendous autonomy. They have all the freedom they can choose, but the other non-central countries didn't. Now, uh, we will think about the case of two countries that none of them are central countries and we will see how they can cooperate and when they don't cooperate what will happen so suppose there's this country and this country say home country is a home country foreign country they are initially pegging their currency to the central currency at the exchange rate of e1 bar now, suddenly they announce they will make the adjustment to this exchange rate and maintain a peg at a new exchange rate, which is E2 bar. And E2 bar is not the same as E1 bar. It's a new exchange rate. This is fixed. This is fixed. But they are making a one-time jump adjustment. In this case, if the new exchange rate E2 bar is greater than E1 bar, then we say the home currency is devalued. There is a devaluation of the home currency, meaning that the value of the home currency became less. If E2 bar is smaller than E1 bar, then it means the home currency gained some value, so we call it a revaluation. We will consider a central country, say the United States, and it's a large country and it has this monetary policy autonomy. They set the interest rate at this dollar interest rate, I dollar. And the home is pegged to the US dollar at this E bar home to dollar. And the foreign country is also pegging at E star bar foreign dollar. And this is the situation before the policy change. So the home country, non-center, they have equilibrium at this point. Foreign country, also non-center, they have the equilibrium point here. And the home country income is less than its targeted potential GDP Y0. So it's Y1 is to the left of Y0. 
And the foreign country is enjoying its potential GDP level, full employment by one, at Y1 star. Now, think about the case. They are pegging, right? So because they are fixing their currency uh, rate equal to the, the pre-announced rate E1 bar. So their initial interest rates are the same as the U.S. interest. Let's talk about the situation where these two countries cooperate. So they cooperate and the home country wants to get close to their targeted income level, Y0. So they conduct, uh, they announce a new exchange rate devaluing its own currency. It can be done by increasing money supply, so home country LM curve shifts to the right. right. So home devalues from E1 to E2, and LM shifts to the right. When it happens, there will be this pressure on the home interest rate to fall, right? So what Every time we draw this ISLM graphs, then we have to assume that there is exchange rate flexibility. And with this idea, we, uh, we decide to which side the IS curve or LM curve would shift. And after the shift, we will think about what they do to fix the exchange rate, right? So when the home country lowers its interest, uh, it, it, it prints more money and LM curve shifts to the, to the right, then there is this pressure on the home interest rate to fall. And what happens is the foreign country IS curve would shift to the left. By this IS curve shift, the home country can maintain its fixed exchange rate at the new rate E to R, right? under at this equilibrium right and it, at this initial equilibrium the applied exchange rate was e1 bar uh, in contrast the foreign country they have this shrink in the is curve in the goods market and then because they announced they will fix the exchange rate they have to keep this foreign interest rate equal to the u.s interest rate and to keep this interest rate in equilibrium they have to conduct a contractionary monetary policy. So LM curve will shift to the left to meet this target interest rate, right? And the final result, the home country income in equilibrium is cl now closer to the target income Y0 than before. Right? For the foreign country, they stayed in the target income level, but now with this policy change at home and because they decided to cooperate they have to suffer a little right so the foreign country by cooperating uh, they are making some sacrifice but what if the home country is not satisfied with this outcome this cooperative outcome so they are with cooperation they were at y2 equilibrium income foreign country at Y2, Y star 2 equilibrium income. And if the home country is not satisfied with cooperation, then they may just break this cooperative uh, relationship and then devalue the currency even further. So the home country devalues the exchange rate from E1 to E2 and then even to E3. Now it will boost the home country trade balance even more so is curve will shift again to is3 and at the same time uh, yeah with the devaluation to e3 the lm curve would shift even further right and with this devaluation uh, the home country trade balance improves so is curve shifts right and with this the foreign country uh, trade balance will worsen one more time. So IS curve is now shifting from IS star 2 to IS star 3. 
the home country can maintain its peg with this new exchange rate E3. And when the IS curve for foreign countries shifted to the new position, they, have st they also have to keep their exchange rate fixed. So they have to use a contractional monetary policy. So LM curve shifts to the left again. And the final result will be at the sacrifice of the foreign country, sacrifice of its neighbor, the home country can achieve the target income level, whereas the foreign country will suffer a lot more by having much, much lower income level than before. And what is the likely consequence? Probably the foreign country will not be happy about this outcome, and they may want to retaliate. So how can they retaliate? They will do the same, uh, they will use the same tactic and they just devalue it, their own currency and their LM curve shifts to the right. And when it happens, the, home, the foreign country interest rate will face this downward pressure. And as the, as the foreign country exchange rate goes down to a new level, then trade balance of the foreign country will improve, shifting IS curve back to the right, and then it will shrink the home country IS curve to the left. And when it happens to fix the exchange rate, they have to contract money supply, and then they will go backward. Will the home country be happy? They Initially, they didn't cooperate, so why would they put up with this? So they will, again, devalue its own currency. So both countries, will competitively devalue its own currency. And then this situation is usually called the currency war. Beggar, thigh, neighbor policy. So uh, maybe I'll stop here.